Hey, figure photographers and other otaku fans, welcome back to another episode of Unorthodox Otaku Guy. So today I'm going to be doing a something a little bit different because the last video I covered, I did a little bit about cameras and recommendations from things you can do uh, that can help with taking photos. Now we're going to go into the actual photo structure building itself. Now I will throw out there, these are tips and tricks, I'm not a professional, um, though I do feel like I can make some really good stuff and maybe I can help throw some ideas out there that might inspire you and I love that the most is that it might be able to actually make something inspire you to do something a little different that might help you make your photos a lot better because over the course of a couple of years now I have learned a lot in discovering of what actually works and what it's not only uh, works but it's also easy and fun to do um, so I'm going to break down a lot of things over course of episodes that may help you out. So in this episode, we're going to be working on basically backdropping, um, whether it be backdrops or diorama, stuff like that. So I'm going to start simple first and, uh, you might be able to see it, but, um, I actually have my printer down here. I won't pull it out and show it or anything like that, that, but I'll explain it to you like which one it is. Um, I do use a Canon printer. Um, I am actually really a big fan of this printer. I'm actually even going to give you the model number. This is the MG5622. I'm absolutely in love with this printer because it is a serious bang for your buck printer. It did not cost me much, and I, even with a warranty extension as well, uh, where it does a great job at printing. It prints uh, photos at uh, a high, high scale. It's got excellent photo printing capabilities. The only thing is, it is a two-in-one printer, not a, not like a massive all-in-one, but it's a two-in-one printer. It does have scanning capabilities and printing capabilities. It definitely shines more for its printing capabilities. The scanner in this thing is just like, it's like function over, over form. Like, the printer in this thing works fantastic in terms of quality. Um, one thing I will throw out there also is, let me pull it out so I can show you. Um, now, one thing about printing especially if you want to print a lot, all right? Printing can be actually pretty expensive. Now, um, I found out this printer that I have, the MG5622, uh, you can get bulk cartridges for really cheap. I bought this box, I'm already, like you see, I've already made a dent in it. Um, I bought this box for like 20 to 25 bucks tops. Um, that is literally like a major fraction of what it would cost to buy this ink normally at the store. Buy in bulk, buy them online. I bought these on eBay. They have done me really well. Um, I've had one one bad cartridge so far, which is not a bad ratio because I've used quite a few of them. Uh, quality, they work fantastic. They look work like the real thing. They have the chips, so they function with the computer in the, the printer, so there's no issues there. So, that covers ink there if you're thinking about printing a lot. Uh, and I do. I love printing a lot. So, not only whether it be just... I love printing decals and stuff like that. I'll cover that another time. That's not really that important for figure photography. May on occasion, maybe. But also, uh, like, you know, just art prints in general, because I make art prints out of my work. Um, but also backdrops. Now, going over, before I even show you the type of paper and whatnot, here's an idea. Um, so recently, I had a uh, Metal Gear Solid one in the aspect of doing uh, snake skating on big shelf from PlayStation 2. Alright, so on Big Shell, uh, I found a good shot that I can print out. This is matte photo paper used for this backdrop here. Alright, and you'll see in uh, this shot here, this one is done with Snake. That's the one I edited together, and that's the backdrop that was used for that shot. Now, uh, in this next shot here, you'll see this is a uh, jungle scene, a printed on matte photo paper as well. And you'll see here was used as a backdrop for uh, my shot of Snake and Motoko in like a Jurassic Park Jeep. Kind of like going with a Jurassic Park theme right now, especially because there's a movie around the corner. I thought I figured it would go with the theme. It's pretty cool. And I just customized a Jeep recently for Figmas, which was really cool. Um, I'll, go, I'll cover two more here, which is really cool, so you can get the idea of how useful and effective these are. Um, I made this really creepy and eerie shot uh, using this beautiful red tree background here, uh, printed out in matte photo paper, and all these shots I edit in Photoshop too, um, so change them up all, quite a bit, uh, found quite a few of them, and you can just make a cool backdrop yourself, and then, uh, 
you'll see it was used here in my shot of the creepy wooded uh, photo of Rem where it made it seem like she was like this bloodied forest it really altered how it really is in perspective uh, so you can see how backdropping can really change how something is and using matte photo paper it doesn't really get affected by light very well it doesn't reflect and shine it too bad um, and this last one the the fourth one I have um, as an example you'll see here this is a HD uh, Splatoon shot as a background and in celebration of uh, was it uh, Pearl and Marina for Splatoon 2 they had amiibos come out so you'll see here I used it as a backdrop where it made it seem like they're actually in like the world of Splatoon 2 and that is a useful usage of just simple backdropping without going crazy building a diorama going anything of the sort where you're going nuts these are great simple fun shots you can do at home with minimal effort and you can have excellent results and that is besides the ones where I like to actually build dioramas this is a great recommended starting zone if you want simple good shots with minimal effort um, on that so you can give your maximum effort elsewhere um, so now that we, I showed you some backdrops and some uh, uh, usages for them so you can get an idea of what to do with them um, I used I actually used official Canon matte photo paper and this stuff was on sale even at Staples it did not break, break the bank you can find this on sale every now and then and I didn't spend much on it um, otherwise just go on probably Amazon and look up matte photo paper and get something on there um, I have quite a few different papers I found on there just look at the reviews um, that have worked flawlessly for me now all the photo papers that I use and I print with this uh, printer too I have zero issues with bleeding or even runoff or not drying or whatever it's usually dry immediately when I use it so I can usually use these immediately after I print them which is really cool all right so that's a cool little trick right there that you can do to have some simple backdropping now uh, before I even continue without even one more thing I'd like to show on this one all right so you'll see here I have there's light coming down at an angle here which I positioned on the side this is a much larger photo but I cropped it to be like this so the light is coming down here so you'll actually see how I have this one lamp here now this is not one of my fancy lamps that I um, or like soft lighting rigs that I use um, I'll get into lighting on a different episode but you'll see how um, even putting it into your backdrop I made sure the light was coming in over this area and made it seem like it was part of this shot making this a little more believable that this is actually the backdrop so it's a fun little thing to think about when you're making backdrops all right an alternative option I can recommend that you can use besides using matte photo paper is if you don't have say a decent printer you know a stock up of ink uh, and some matte photo paper that you can use with the photo printer um, you can recommend a, something a little more simple that can be done effectively and that is as simple as using a laptop now not even just a laptop you can actually just use an LCD screen for computers sh shall we say so if you set up a computer screen uh, behind it I preferably I use a laptop in my example in my previous ones before I started printing backdrops for simple setups uh, I would set up the laptop in the back uh, I actually have a demonstration shot here for the behind the scenes you'll actually see how I had it set up thankfully I had one of uh, these shots taken hopefully I do so you'll actually see it right there and uh, you'll see that uh, I have the screen set up behind everything that I'm setting up on the base of the laptop itself so the laptop screen is being the backdrop now on the downfall is the fact that the LCD screen uh, used for that is reflective it's got a glossy type finish to it so the lights that you might be using for the shot may actually reflect off the screen and mess up your shot so if you are really careful you can angle the lights nicely where they won't shine off and reflect and ruin the shot um, you'll see in an example here this is actually a really good shot I took it's not remastered yet but you'll see a current state um, this shot here is used uh, with the LCD backdrop. It's actually the same behind the scenes shot. It's a shot of Motoko sneaking up uh, on a soldier on a rooftop uh, in terms of ideal in, in the world of Ghost in a Shell. And the try to set up the lighting in terms of the fact that it's like a well-lit roof uh, in the middle of the night. 
you know, and it's got, you know, a bunch of pieces used to simulate that type of feel and experience, uh, which is really cool and it was really simple. So if you don't have, say, a lot of materials, like, you know, like I say, an ink, photo printer, and photo paper, you could simply get away with just using a laptop screen. It's really using uh, effectively some uh, just creativity at that point, seeing what you can use. Now, it's not even limited to just that. Now, on occasion, you'll actually see I may have one or, one or two around. Um, there are, it's back there. I'm not going to pull them out because I'm probably going to knock some stuff over. But, for example, there's a Ryu figure back there from Figuarts. He actually came with two different backdrops that you can use that may be able to be used for a photo. And then there was a collector's edition there, a uh, cat Figma from uh, Gravity Brush. Uh, she actually includes a reversible uh, backdrop. Now, that's interesting because it can be used as a photo backdrop, which is really awesome. And then there was a, um, a NECA figure of Crash Bandicoot, and just by slip, simply trimming off the top, it had a little bit of a backdrop used for, I could use for a photo, which is really, really cool. Uh, so try to think a little creatively um, sometimes when you get a figure or something like that. You might actually have a backdrop included with them and not even realize it. Some are intentional, some are not. So try to do a, a little bit of experimenting here and there when it comes to what you can use as a backdrop. And you'll be surprised on how much you could pull off on taking a really good shot with something really, really simple. Now, the next thing that's going to really help that out is lighting. So we're going to cover that in the next episode that might be able to help you out light your uh, sets just a little bit better uh, to make your shot really shine. So... I hope you guys uh, learned a little bit from these tips and tricks, and these might be a little bit uh, helpful besides going full-blown and building a diorama. Uh, I'll probably cover that on another episode about what tips and tricks I can give you in terms of build, so like building a simple or maybe even a more advanced diorama, uh, and then you can go from there. But this is a nice, simple, get-you-started uh, idea to really get the uh, gears turning, get some tips and tricks in there, and then... I want you to see you guys experiment. If you have some cool stuff that you may have learned from this, and this maybe inspired you to take some shots, um, post them. You know, put some uh, links uh, below if you want, or you know, any type of responses there. I'd love to see them. Um, whether, especially if it's on Instagram or anything of the sort. But I'd love to see if I got you guys inspired at all. So. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope you stay tuned and check out the rest of my tips and tricks that might actually help you just a little bit more. Uh, and I'm still, you know, over the years learning myself too. I've always used the mindset of I know, never know enough. So if anybody has any cool uh, things, post them as well. Because they'll probably not only, um, I don't know if I already know them, but it might help me out. And as well as other people in the community. Because this is a great community to be part of. So the two best communities I like to throw out there that are my favorite are, of course, the Instagram community. It's by far the best figure photography community out there. Um, the second best is on Facebook. It is the Figma International Facebook uh, Facebook group. I have never been part of such a wonderful group before besides this. I uh, absolutely love it. If any of you are on there are watching this, thank you so much for ch chiming in. That is such an awesome group. Uh, a little on the not safe for work side, but fantastic people nonetheless, and they're always willing to help you out. And then uh, lastly, um, you know, to be honest, it's really not that bad as uh, DeviantArt. Uh, the ones that really aren't stellar are Tumblr is a pretty quiet activity, uh, as well as uh, Twitter. Not so much activity on there. It's, it's kind of like hit and miss. Uh, there may be some on there. I might be just missing them. Uh, so if you know any wonderful ones, of course, share them. So... Until the next episode, thank you so much for watching and stay orthodox.